I have no problem with Hillary Clinton or anybody criticizing Donald Trump. I do have a problem when people say things that are dishonest, ignorant, and divisive. And I do have a problem with Hillary Clinton going to a foreign country and putting down Americans. That is not cool. Not cool. Not cool. You have no idea how not cool that shit is. This is what Hillary Clinton recently said in India. So I won the places that are optimistic, diverse, dynamic, moving forward, and his whole campaign, Make America Great Again, was looking backwards. You know, you didn't like black people getting rights, you don't like women, you know, getting jobs, you don't want to, you know, see that Indian American succeeding more than you are. Whatever your problem is, I'm going to solve it. If there was a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Donald Trump was born in 1946. He is a baby boomer. And many baby boomers fantasize, idolize about how wonderful things were in the United States of America in the 1950s. Well, why is this? Why is this decade? Why is this period so great? Well, you had a couple things going on. A lot of pride, a lot of opportunity. A lot of pride because we defeated the Nazis. World War II was won. We drove out a great evil from Africa and Europe. We were victorious and we also provided a lot of aid to these war-torn countries. Food, clothing, blankets, material provided a lot of aid. So we were the good guys and Americans were standing up tall. A lot of pride. A lot of pride in being an American. And there was an unbelievable amount of opportunity. Why? Well, because of the factories in Europe, especially Japan, Parts of Russia, parts of China were completely destroyed. A lot of their cities were completely destroyed. But on our shores, our cities are still intact. Our factories are still intact. We're producing. Business is really good. A lot of opportunity. For young men looking for a job, not only did that provide a lot of opportunity, a lot of people you would have been competing with. A lot of men your age died in the war. So for men, a lot of opportunity and economic conditions, uh, cost of living conditions where one salary, one person in the household working could support a family, could house and feed a family and, and have a car and the society at that time, the American society, was all about the family and for women to stay home and have children. There's a reason why it's called baby boom, have children to make up for the population that was lost during this war, to reboost the population. So this was a great time for the United States of America. We were respected. A lot of countries where we liberated them thought of us as heroes. Imagine for the Jews in concentration camps that were liberated by United States Army divisions. We were the heroes and had all this opportunity and once again had this uh, cost of living, had this economic conditions where one person working can support the household. Now, obviously, a lot has changed from the 1950s. We certainly don't have the pride that we do. After World War II, eventually we get to Vietnam, the disastrous war in Iraq, this uh, quagmire going on in Afghanistan, and these bad things happening in the world, the scumbag Assad in Syria slaughtering his own people and getting away with it. And uh, nobody's standing up to them. This foreign policy that confuses people. We go into Libya. We go to don't go into Syria. So, and we're not as respected, uh, and certainly not as loved as we used to be around the world. 
and Americans themselves, you just hear them a whole lot of complaining. We don't have that pride like we used to, and we certainly don't have that opportunity. The factories in Europe, they're going. They're not destroyed, and especially, of course, in Japan, especially, of course, in, in China. So that's what people in Trump's generation, that's what they're talking about, make America great again, to go back to the 1950s, but you can't go back. Those conditions no longer exist. And you have automation, automation. you have outsourcing. So you have conditions in cost of living where now two people have to work full time to be able to support a household. So we have a different world. We have different challenges. But that's what he's talking about. He was a kid in the 1950s, and he's idolizing this world that he grew up in. He's not thinking about make America great again, as in things were so great with segregation. Uh, things were so great when a woman was expected to, to be a mother and, and have, a, have a large family. Uh, certainly he benefited that with a lot of people benefiting with mothers helping them uh, get ready for school and being there when they, when they got home. A lot of people have fond memories of how much time they were able to spend uh, with their mother and more of that family environment. But that's not what he's talking about when he says, make America great again. He's not talking about, oh, weren't, weren't things great before 1920, before women had the right to vote, or in the 1800s when our country still had slavery. And to insinuate that, it's dishonest, it's ignorant, it's divisive. And there's no excuse for it. Hillary Clinton right now is living a very petty life. She's angry and bitter, and she's living an angry and bitter life. And the only place this is going to lead is for her, for her to have an, eventually an angry and bitter death. I hope that she finds a better path. She is an extremely well-known politician. She still has a large following, and she has the power to uplift people. She has the power to bring people up, and that's not what she's doing right now. She's bringing people down. She's being divisive, and I hope she improves her message. I hope she improves her health. Uh, this is a woman, obviously, who's not in good health right now. I hope she gets her priorities together. I hope she focuses on lifting people up. I hope she goes on a better path than the path she's on now. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. This is Jim Wall. Thanks for watching. And speaking of the 1950s, here's a clip from a television show during that period. Cisco, do we have to leave all our good friends now? Only until next time, Pancho. Adios, amigos. <laughs> 